Uh, jelly tips? Christmas on the beach. Jet planes. Uh, Pavlova. Trubless. Jean Bannon. Bungee jumps. Here jumps. we are, trying to outdo each other on YNZ's The Best. Feel free to go outside and enjoy the view. We'll be a while. Dan Carter's Undie Campaign. Welcome to Southern Mirahiku in New Zealand's Deep South, a region renowned for its unmatched beauty. This week it provides a natural playground for New Zealand's best road cyclists in the 66th edition of the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Over seven days we will see all the Deep South has to offer, starting and finishing in Invercargill, a city transforming for the future, through fertile farmland, the rugged south coast, the beauty of Fiordland and the majestic remarkables in Queenstown, all to push the country's top road cyclists to their absolute limit. 126 riders, 21 teams, over 860 kilometres and one winner. This is the 2022 SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Thursday stage to the top of Bluff Hill provided a classic day's racing. After pleasant overhead conditions over the opening four days of racing, the weather gods remembered it was tour week and through sun, wind and driving rain at the peloton. A group of seven riders got off the front but weren't allowed much freedom, meaning the stage would be decided up the final climb. British rider Dan Gardner claimed the honours, but the big move came from Southlander Josh Burnett, who cut tour leader Carter Bettle's overall lead to just 20 seconds ahead of the penultimate day's racing to Gore. You know, we knew it was going to be a hard day. The boys did everything right all stage, you know. We let the brake go and then we rode and kept it in check. Um, and then, yeah, unfortunately, I got a flat with, I don't know, 10Ks to go. And, and unfortunately, some riders out there decided to take that opportunity to, to their advantage, which you, you don't like to see, but you know, it is what it is. And, and we're lucky that we're still holding the jersey and, yeah, we'll move on from that. It's never the way you want to take time out of someone with a puncture as well, but it's just a pretty unfortunate thing about cycling. Um, it's, you never want to punch it, but you never want to punch it in the crosswinds either. I think uh, for sure he did some good damage limitation, but yeah, we're really happy with how yesterday played out and it gives us a few options for today. For me, probably looking more at the time trial and not losing any time today. And I think being Oliver's probably the threat I'm thinking about with time bonuses and stuff regarding overall GC. So. We'll just keep an eye on him and also Burnett getting away today, so, yeah. We've been riding together on Thursday nights and, um, and Leaston, and um, I've done the tour a couple of times, but the others have not done the tour before and just really keen to tick it off, so it's been real cool to come down and, um, and we're nearly there. We've got, you know, two, two big days to go. So Brendan's been a physio with um, the spinal trusses, or this lean fella here, but um, yeah, the, um, we just wanted to raise some raise awareness because the fantastic work they do, and there's a lot of unfortunately cyclists that do have um, spinal injuries, and they um, get treated, and the spinal trust um, enhances the care of those people. So anyone can go to our website, and we we continue to raise funds for that. So thank you. Being one of the Southlanders with a chance of winning, it's the first time since Doug Bath. Um, it is a bit of pressure, but it's something I don't really think about. You know. Um, I know Doug quite well, I think I got my first bike from Gladstone Cycles as well, so uh, it's pretty special to have the chance, but I'm just going to stick to the team plan and if it's me or if it's Ben, we're not phased, we just really want to win this race. Yeah, it's going to blow to bits I'd say, <laughs> so we'll have to um, be on to it all day and just, yeah, give it everything. I actually think today is going to be harder than any of the other stages. The wind's up this morning, so the westerly's blowing, and um, we've got lots of change of direction in the first sort of 60 k's. So you can see all the list of numbers down here. Where um, I've just um, written down all the points where the road turns and, we, and it goes crosswind. But um, the reality of this today, um, by the time we get to the second or third one, it's probably going to be in five groups, and the rest of it won't really matter by then. So <laughs> it's going to be brutal. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> So 
here we are with the penultimate stage of this year's tour. 20 seconds covering the top two going into this 151 kilometres. Yeah, there'll be some nervous excitement, some anxiousness in the field. You can see a few of the riders already trying to swap and change a bit of gear off as they try and work out what the weather conditions are, which will play a part. Josh Benita, of course, the Southland ride, rider riding for Creation Science Mitre Q, he'll be anxiously looking at these weather conditions. They'll have had a, a bit of a chat before the start, I'm sure, but today's stage is really going to have a big bearing on this year's race. Working their way through here in the neutral section through the streets of Invercargill with plenty of community support. The school's out in force once again as they make their way up past James Hargis Junior High here. A few of the riders giving them the high fives as they cruise on through with the flag about to be dropped and they'll be into those early sprints once again. 151 k's of really tough racing featuring a whole series of either flats, crosswinds, lumps and bumps. You can see here the start always very dramatic. Nick Kugazu here is taking second place in the Supreme outside the James Hargis College which is going to be taken here by Hunter Goff, ironically an ex-James Hargis College pupil so he'll be uh, quite proud of that effect right in front of all of the old school kids here but Nick Kugazu really has got a tight, tight fight on his hands for this year's Harcourt's points jersey because that is really close. Unlike previous years where some of these guys have been in breakaways and taken a lot of extra points, this is going to go right down to the wire, as is the yellow jersey. Heading out of the edge of town now, and you can see the peloton, a fair pounding into it. They'll be reaching speeds of an excess of 60k here with the wind on their back. A very quick start. Typically what we see every time is they try to establish a break, and it often takes a good 20 to 30 kilometres before finally we see the rubber band snap. Yeah, that rubber band is going to get shorter and shorter as this year's race is going on. And you can see there Hunter Goff with his early preems from the BJ Carter Builders and Insulators team is in this front split. Often though, these splits get caught, they merge, they come again and it can, like you say, take a while for them to go. But Hunter Goff, he is really, really having a good stage here. He's obviously got some good form and is coming right as the race goes on. Yeah, there's a good number of Southland riders contesting this year's tour. Fantastic to see them mixing it up there with some of the top echelon of riders from across the country and from throughout the world as we see a couple of colours that we haven't seen much of in the last couple of days. Business South off the front there. That may well be Max Campbell who's uh, performed extremely well from Australia riding for the Business South team and ITM also now getting themselves into the mix and trying to establish a bit of a gap early on as they make their way up to another one of the preems towards Macquarie with school. Yep. You often see this. Some of these riders ride in as the race goes. A lot of riders get more and more fatigued. Some riders can get stronger and stronger as the race develops. So it's an interesting um, you know, factor that you just don't know how you're going to go. Often it's dictated by how much training and racing you've done coming into this event. But these guys really have got some splits going on behind them. They're not looking around. Of course, they're just drilling it, trying to get away as fast as they can. But the field is starting to split up a bit. There's a lot of challenges looking round, this will be an interesting move. And of course, time is running out for that opportunity to try and pick up some dollars, try and pick up a jersey, and ultimately pick up a stage in this SBS Bank Tour. So no doubt, a number of the team directors have sat down with these riders and said, look, we need to get ourselves off the frontier. We've had a few days, if you like, riding ourselves into it. Now it's time to do the challenge. And the Gore stage is a fantastic way to be able to do that. As we look to the colours here of Transport Engineering Southland Deep South. And it looks like we've got Mike Phillips up here. Now he'll be in support of the man in the green jersey here. He comes from an Ironman background. He's ridden this tour now last couple of years, so he's starting to establish himself as a bit of a road rider as well. But this will be an interesting break as we look to a man formerly of Southland, now based in the United States of America. Number 94 there on your screen for yourself, Elliot Crowther. Great to see him back for the Quality Food Southland team. Here we are seeing a new group of riders here at the front. There's also the young Finnegan uh, Murphy from the Green Monkey team. They've had a great race this year also. So no surprise here to see the team in green, the Creation Science Mitre Q team. Of course, plenty of cards here to play today where they've got a couple of men in the top 10 with Josh Burnett, as we've already said, just 20 seconds off. But also the mountain biker, Ben Oliver, who's in some fantastic form, seeing the way he climbed up Bluff Hill. They're putting some pressure on 
ultimately to try and snap the rubber band of the man in yellow from Australia. Whom I see is represented in that front group by Kane Richards from the ARA Pro Racing Sunshine team. He's really the only member of their squad that is actually rolling through and functioning with the Mitre Q Creation Science team. So they are obviously formulating the chase. Meanwhile, back at the front of the race, a complete new set of chaps that we haven't really seen a lot of all week. We have seen a lot, of course, of, of Nick Kugazu with the uh, Sprint Ace competition. These guys, when you look at their faces, you can understand the kind of effort that they're putting in. This is hard work out there, and it is really at a time in the race where you are getting a bit more fatigued. The concentration required, the wheels getting dropped. You can see here there's been a bit of a split in this front group already as they go for another preem. But uh, the concentration required as you go further in this race gets harder and harder. And interesting to note, that is Bridgewater. Now, we saw a lot of him in the break on the day across the Tiano, where he picked up quite a few points at that stage there. So he comes into the sprint competition well up, and he could be challenging Kirkazoo here today as they make their way through Wallace Town. Some fantastic aerial shots are here of the leaders as they make their way across Southland, heading up towards Drummond and lining themselves up for yet another one of the sprints here. You can see Kirgazoo in the green. Now, here's a look over the shoulder. He's summing up one of his teammates, of course, Phillips, who does a wee bit of a squeeze there. Now, that's done on purpose to push out the base solutions rider here who's trying to get as many points as he can as well. So a bit of team tactics. New for the man from Iron Man. He's learning a lot of tricks here on the tour. Yeah, these chaps that come from a multi-sport background and we've seen a lot of riders in the past have come along uh, to do this as part of their training regime for Ironmans and Coast to Coasts. They learn more about bike racing in a week riding the SBS Bank Tour than they probably would in two years of club races in their hometown. So they have a baptism of fire. A lot of them come back for a second or third attempt. Some of them do it once and say, enough's enough. I'll stick to being a triathlete. An amazing shot here of the Peloton as they're well stretched out, heading on over the other side of Winter now as we head into yet another one of the King of the Mountains opportunities here today. And this is always an opportunity to break up a group. And it looks like we're starting to see a split here in this leading group with just some 35k to go as they head up towards Titafua. We've had the flat stages, we've had the crosswind stages, we're coming into the more hilly parts and it's these hilly parts that are used as we see here as a bit of an attempt to split things, to use them as a springboard to get away. There the rider number 94, Elliot Crowther, the ex-Southland boy from Quality Food Southland, he is really grinding it out to stick with these two guys. This kid was a fantastic bike rider when he was younger, did a lot of good stuff on the track, has had an incredible time overseas in America in his own business and professional career but he is really making a good job of staying on the back of these guys because he realises if he's not on by the time they go over the top there's a descent and he will be gone so he's making a great job of this. Grave puts a wee sneaky nudge down on the inside to pick himself up some of the points here in the King of the Mountains and there's plenty more on offer and of course depending on the length, depending on the steepness of each of these climbs here today determines how many points are up for grabs and these guys would have done the calculations at the start of the day to understand whether or not they really are in contention to pick up those sort of points and pick up ultimately the jersey. As we head back to the peloton it's dropped to 2 minutes 50 here as the man in yellow looks cool, calm and collected. Yeah, he's got his team in front of him here. You can see that Kane Richards again at the front for the ARA Pro Racing Sunshine team. That man is a one-man motorbike, but he has now got his teammates in behind him. They're protecting the man in yellow. Everything at this point in the stage race is going to plan. It just has to stick together here for uh, the young lad Bettles, who did such a good job going up the Bluff Hill climb yesterday. He'll be looking forward to this later in the stage because there's a few more climbs, but at this point in time, textbook stage racing from the ARA Pro Racing Sunshine team. The man in yellow, of course, looks relaxed because of the fact that he knows that the guys off the front are of no threat to the overall general classification at this particular point in time. These are the guys you have to keep a close eye on. The guys in green, the ones we said have got plenty of cards to play as they head out of Matara now, up towards Waimumu, and the challenges are going on. They are trying to stretch things here. This could be a play to try and get the yellow. Yeah, Carter Biddle's job now is to keep his eyes firmly on the Mitre Q creation side 
Science team who are trying to set up Josh Burnett. And you can see here he's got some real good fresh legs after yesterday. Josh Burnett stretching things out a wee bit for these guys behind him. But there's still a bit of racing left yet to go. The under-23 rider there right at the front of the race, he's also in a pivotal position too to split things up. He realises that his chances rely on him trying to get away as well. So Carter Bettles from ARA Pro Race and Sunshine Coast is under a bit of pressure here. Yes, the yellow jersey is being hit left, right and centre by a lot of the key players. Meanwhile, out in front, a whole different story. They're out to pick up some dollars. They're ultimately trying to take a stage victory. They're not too concerned about the fight for that yellow jersey. So things are really starting to heat up in the stage. We're at the front of the chasing peloton here. The Mitre Q uh, creation signs team are really putting some heat on as are the QFS boys. And Josh Burnett, you can see him further back there out of the breeze a wee bit with Carter Bettles in front. Things are really going to start heating up here with 20 k's to go. Yes, one of the arms goes up from uh, one of the players in amongst this uh, bunch here as the split starts to happen a wee bit with the man in yellow. Everyone very tentative. There's a lot of nerves in amongst this group knowing that the Ks are running out. As we see, out of the seat goes Burnett. Could this be a bit of a move? Is he going to go to the front? No, he's heading down into the gutter, making life even more difficult. And he's got a couple of riders who have made the junction with him. It looked like the likes of Powernet's Ollie Jones up into there as well. And potentially, I think we also saw Alex Heaney of Spoken Cycles 101. They are the three that have managed to sneak off very quickly here and there was no reaction from the man in yellow. Yeah, they had been doing some quite hard work at the front as well and it was a fantastic move here from Josh Burnett. He waited until they'd done their turns and were a wee bit, wee bit more fatigued. So Josh Burnett, this is his bid now to try and regain some time back on that yellow jersey. Uh, Weira, who was back in the front of the peloton. Josh Burnett here, along with these other two chaps, has really got some work on his hands. And you can see him absolutely driving it. And there's a reason why Jones is sitting on the back. He is part of the team with the under-23 leader, Joshua Kench, who sits in third overall as well. He won't be interested in rolling through. They'll be very aware of this. So it's a two-man race here, trying to drive things and get across to that leading group, or at least take that 20 second advantage and you can see now looking back to the chasing peloton that's exactly what's starting to happen and who's on the front the man in yellow himself this is how much the tour means to him yeah carter Biddles realizes that the whole thing is starting to split up and it's starting to perhaps fall through his fingers a bit if he lets this front group or this intermediary group we're not at the front yet get away by too far his yellow jersey aspirations are going to vanish up the road so carter Biddles is really taking this all on himself and is furiously trying to bridge that gap. Uh, jelly tips? Christmas on the beach. Jet planes? Uh, Pavlova. Tribbles. Jean Bannon. Bungee jumps. Here jumps. we are, trying out to each other on YNZ's oh, The Best. Yeah. Feel free to go outside and enjoy the view. We'll be a while. Dan Garner's Undie Campaign. So our quartet at the front of the race here make their way down one of the final descents into the traditional finish into Gore. Meanwhile, we know they've got the three chases going on and the yellow jersey back in that third group. This is mouth-watering stuff coming into Gore here, Doug, on the penultimate day of this tour. And here are the chases. It's gone from three. We are now down to the two. And you might as well say it's just the one because Jones, as we've already said, is sitting on. So Burnett here is having to do a warm-up time trial for tomorrow. So Josh Burnett is just showing an immense amount of patience here. He's got the rider behind sitting on, as you've explained, who won't come through given the, the teammates' chances. Doing it all on his own. Here's the front group coming up Broughton Street. This is the last chance for these guys to try and make a springboard for the attack. The finish line is not far from the top of this climb. And it's Oliver Grave who makes a move from Central Benchmaker's wheel bike. He springboards himself off there and there's not a massive reaction from the others, not because they don't want to, but the bodies are fatigued. Meanwhile, this man here, he's hitting. He's hitting out the front and he's wanting to take out a stage victory. Along the way, he'll pick up a few extra points. This will be pushing him up in the Jesco Hydraulics King of the Mountains. But can he do the ultimate, take out a stage in this year's tour? 
Broughton Street has always been used and, and in previous editions of the SBS Bank Tour and going back in history the stage used to end at the top of this climb so Oliver Grave here has really got some work ahead of him but the chasing peloton here back at the front of the peloton is really in dire straits you can see here now there's some panic stations from the ARA Pro Cycling Sunshine Coast Boys they really know what they've got ahead of them young Carter Bettles there in the yellow jersey will be seriously stressed about this situation He'll also be relieved of the fact that some of his teammates have made it back after some of those earlier climbs. They've got themselves out of the red and hit onto the front. And what a man to have out in front there for you. Kane Richards there. We also saw one of his other teammates also driving with Brady Gilmore, trying to ensure that that time doesn't get away. But at this point in time here, no one else interested in assisting. And you can appreciate that here as the yellow jersey tries to do a whole lot of the work on the front. So the responsibility of this uh, chase now really relies on Carter Bettles. He is only 20 seconds ahead of Josh Burnett on the GC at the start of the stage, and he will be panicking now that Josh Burnett from Creation Signs Montecue is up the road. His tour leader jersey could be evaporating on him as we speak. 3,000 metres to go and he'll be putting in every ounce of energy here knowing full well that a number of those riders won't be wanting to assist. Meanwhile the man out in front here he's all focused about taking out a stage and he is powering into it the speed of which he is making it down the final straights here into Gore is phenomenal after 151k. Yeah this is a really really clean ride here from the young boy Graves from the central benchmakers will bike team he has really really done it fantastic ride to pull this out at this late stage in the SBS Bank Tour. He is going to win this stage here coming into Gore and he has a quick look over just before he gets himself ready to put his hands up in the air but what an astonishing ride from this young man. The crowds in Gore line the streets here to support this young man from Auckland as he takes out his first ever stage victory in the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. But the big story of the day is these remaining riders as they come across. And it looks like Jones has managed to get himself right up into there. But where is the green colours of Burnett? There he is. Now the clocks begin to tick to see this man here. Can he hold on to 20 second advantage? Carter Bettles is just having to do or die effort here for the yellow jersey in this year's SBS Bank race. He has done everything he possibly can and there you can see he is spent now and is leaving it up to the rest of the chasers to minimise that time gap. Carter Bettles really is going to be looking at that stopwatch at the end of the stage to see what the damage is from Josh Burnett's amazing ride. Yes, it's been like watching two men doing individual time trials, of course, with Burnett driving at home there with Jones. And now the man in yellow goes across the line to wait to see, has he successfully held on to the yellow jersey? Yeah, this is really going to be a pivotal moment. There's still a day to go in the SBS Bank Tour, but today has been defining. Heading into the last day of this year's tour, Josh Burnett of Southland holds on to a mere eight second lead from Carter Bettles of Australia, while Kent sits at 40 seconds and Oliver at 54. Nick Kirkazoo picked up a number of sprints today, as did Bridgewater, making this a very tight battle in the Harcourt Sprint Ace. George Jackson did a lot of teamwork today, but still holds on to that Jesco Hydraulics King of the Mountains from Jones and Zenovich. Joshua Kench of PowerNet continues to lead in the under 23, 3 minutes 43 from Yarrow and Donzi of Switzerland. While Michael Torkler has the Stonewood home silver jersey over Cooper and Hayden. Daniel Bridgewater for the second time in this year's tour takes out the McClay Jewelers most combative. Quality Foods Southland were prominent throughout the stage and continue to lead now in the Wednesday Cycles team classification from Creation Science and Central Benchmakers. Yeah, I just managed to, to launch one up the left hand side of the road and, and get away with Ollie and, and Heaney and uh, yeah, Heaney was a legend today, he was pulling so hard and he gave me everything so I owe a lot to him and uh, yeah, Ollie uh, was never going to roll and I knew that so just uh, just rode my own race and was always riding for time but my teammates were just were unbelievably good today and it, I wouldn't be anywhere near the front of this race if it wasn't for them so I owe a lot to, to each and every one of them. It's the thing I've dreamed of ever since I was probably five years old. I'm going to enjoy the moment for sure but yeah, uh, that all eyes on tomorrow for sure. Together, folks, would you put your hands together for Joshua Burnett of Creation Science by the Q. 
follow the action from this historic race with live race updates, full results and pictures at tourofsouthland.com.